the words, the law requires the plaintiffs to show more than the injury. They must show the injury came through the negligence of the defendant. And the main question in this case is whether there was any negligence established on the part of the defendant. In a case of this kind, the plaintiff serves a complaint in which he or she states what the claim of negligence is. In this case, the claim of negligence is simply that the automobile was permitted to remain unattended on the public highway with its lights improperly and inadequately applied and set. Negligence is the failure to use reasonable care and caution. It is not negligence as a matter of law to leave an automobile unattended on the public highway. But a person is bound by to, to use reasonable care to see that it is properly secured when left unattended in the highway. Plaintiff here says it was not properly secured in that the brakes were not properly set or applied, so that the sole question in this case is whether or not this brake was properly set and applied when the car was left unattended on the street. So we see by the pleadings themselves and by the claim made by this plaintiff it has been narrowed to that simple so, uh, sole question. And if you find the defendant did properly secure and apply the brakes when he left his car, he is not liable in this case. Unless you find he failed to secure and apply them, you cannot award plaintiffs any damages. You might say the evidence is all one way on that proposition, and insofar as the direct testimony is concerned, it has all been given by the defendant and his witnesses, his daughter and his wife, that he did not secure the brakes and that as far as he knew, the brake was properly working. But in view of the fact that that is the testimony of interested witnesses and that there are other circumstances in the case from which a different inference might properly be drawn, I am submitting that question to you for your decision. In other words, I am asking you to find whether the evidence permits you to say this brake was not properly secured or applied at the time and that that caused this accident. There is evidence here on the part of disinterested witnesses, so far as the, wit the evidence discloses any interest or bias, that the car was caused to move by another vehicle shortly before it began to roll down the hill. And the defendant says that that is what caused the brake to be released, although it had been properly secured before that. It might be that the car was permitted to stand there without being properly secured and applied, and this other disturbance by the second vehicle would have caused it to roll, and if it did, the defendant might still be negligent. On the other hand, if it was properly secured and the brake applied before this other car disturbed it, and you find it was the disturbing act by the other car that released the brake and caused it to roll down the hill, the defendant would not be negligent. So that you can see if a third party's act intervened here, which started this defendant's car rolling down the hill, if you are satisfied that that is what caused it to roll down the hill, you still have the question, was the brake properly secured or applied? If you find it was, and that the third party's act caused it to roll, the defendant is not liable, of course. A man could do no more than exercise reasonable care in parking his vehicle, which would mean secure the car against motion. And if he used the ordinary mechanical contrivances used for that purpose, that is all he is called upon to do. In other words, he is not bound to guard against any possible intervening act. He is not... He is simply bound to use reasonable care to see that the car would stay there, and if he used the things that are usually used and usually found to be sufficient for the purpose, that is all the law calls upon him to do. He is not bound to use the best possible means of securing the car, such as fastening it or something of that kind. That is unreasonable. That is not what the law asks of a man. It is a reasonable and prudent person's conduct that is under test. And the law says it is only what is ordinarily done by an ordinary, prudent person the defendant is bound to do. The question then gets back here solely to the proposition whether you are satisfied the car was secured by the brakes before the accident. If you find it was, that is the end of the plaintiff's case. Although they were injured because it would not be the defendant's negligence which caused the injury.
All right, a short break. Yeah.